Welcome, everyone. I'm dedicating the Shul to Nishmat Harav Yaakov Ben Shmuel, uh, Lori's uh, grandfather. His uh, year site is tonight. So Mishnah and Aliyah, and uh, we're on Daf Memchet Amud Bet Masachat Sukkah. We learned the Mishnah last week in depth. Rashi, Tosfa, etc. Tonight we open the Gemara with a strange Gemara. That's what I said last week. I'm going to make good on what I said. The Gemara opens. Pardon? How many have marks, man? This is particularly a strange Agatha, and we'll 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 have to ask what, why is this in Shas? What does that do with anything? Menan Emili. <clears throat> From where do we get these words? What words? The words that describe the fanfare. The tekia, trua tekia, with which they would herald the arrival of the mu- of the water in its flask, arriving from the um, from the Gichon Spring, taken up from the place known as the Mei Hashiloach, um, and uh, bringing it up into the area, not only the Harabai, but particularly into the Azar through the Sharamayim. Rashi tells the Tokin Umrian Meshivat Hamayim Shel Nisuk. Why such fanfare, etc. Right when they drew up the water, that they're they're making such a big deal out of it. Amar Rav Eina in the Gemara now. Amar Rav Eina, Damar Kra Ushaavtem Mayim Besason. Because they drop the water with joy. Okay, beautiful, very nice. But then comes the strangeness. Hano Tre Mine, Chachme Sason, Chachme Simcha. There were two heretics. One fellow's name was Sason, and one fellow's name was Simcha. Ah, nothing like it. So now we have to learn about how Sassan and Simcha were debating different psukim. We'll ask ourselves, what is this about? But let's just read it inside first of all. Okay, so Amar le Sassan le Simcha. Ana adif minach, I am better than you. Dichtiv, Sassan ve Simcha yasigu. You see the word Sassan and uh, a joy and gladness uh, will be attained. Uh, they will attain. And you see that Sassan comes before Simcha. See, I'm better than you. I'm better than you. From the, we are now within striking distance, a month, uh, coming into Purim, uh, Abal in Latova. There's a Simcha and Sassan Layhudim that we read about in the eighth parak of the Megillah, the Megillah Esther. So Simcha came first. See? Amalei Sassan Simcha. Sassan says to Simcha, Chadyova Shakuch Vishavyuch Parvanka. Uh, you will be the runner, Sassan says to Simcha. You know, I know you'll be the runner before me, like like a retinue. You'll be ahead of me. You'll uh, uh, exaltly exalting my presence. You'll go out with Simcha. The so Simcha will run ahead. Amalei Simcha le Sassan. Oh yeah, you think you're so great? Simcha says to Sassan, Chad Yomach Shavkuch Umalubach Maya. Yeah, one day they're going to take you and they're going to fill water through you. Ushav to Mayim Besasan, you give you a water drawer. I'm going to be running in front of the people. You're going to be drawing the water for them. I mean, this is a very strange piece of a god, is it not? Mm-hmm. Two people who have the great fortune or misfortune to be known as Sassan and Simcha. Were they twins? Were they brothers? I have no idea. <laughs> it sounds like kindergarten. <laughs> I am my Pusik's better than your Pusik. Okay. Amar Leho Mina, the Shmei Sassan, the Rabbi Abahu. So Sassan came over to Rabbi Abahu. He sauntered, he probably, you know, saddled up to him, to Rabbi Abahu, and he said to him, in the future, you're going to pour water for me. You're going to be like the water drawer in the word to come. You know why? You're going to draw water in joy. said to him, Had it said, then it would be like you say. Since it's called Bissasson, Means within Sasson, means you are going to be carrying the water, means Mashche Daho Gavra Mashvinan Leguda or Malinan Bay Maya. In the future, somehow they're going to stretch out your body or your skin or something like that. They'll make you into a water flask and you'll carry the water. Everyone go to intermission. That's the first part of our show. We learned this Gemara. <laughs> what is going What is this about? It's about. So the various Mufarshim try to understand the, the quizzical nature of this debate. And they begin with the idea that here you have two people, um, Sassan and Simcha, if I may say, you can make fun of a, of a min, of a heretic, two knuckleheads. And one guy knows Psukim very well, and the other guy knows Psukim very well. Mm-hmm. The heretics. So to them, the, the words of Tanakh are uh, fodder for the of competitiveness of two people to show whose ego is stronger than the others, based on Drashas and Psukim, where they found the name in the Pasuk. 
And contrast this Gemara with the fact that Nisuch HaMayim, we just mentioned it, I mentioned it last night, Ben Michal HaMayrev, Talach HaMosh Misinai, notwithstanding Rebuta Pemetera's drush of Mem Yod Mem, that we have in uh, in, the, in the Korbanot, but that's that's a that's a remez, but it's not it's not the drasha. The drasha is Allah Moshe Misenai. Contrast that with this story, and then of course the fact that the Mishnah describes um, a Kohen who is masquerading as Me'anshe uh, Shlomenu, and yet was really a Tzduki, and therefore when it came time to do the Nisuch Hamayim, he was devout. He had his own standard. What was his standard? We don't do Nisuch Hamayim, so he poured it on his own feet to denigrate the idea of the Chachamim, which the Chachamim were insisting is not our idea. It's a Masora that came to us, Allah Moshe Misenai. Yeah? It's not only today that people sometimes stand up and they say, ah, Rabbi made it up, this is, it's not from a source. And yeah, yeah. It, it was happening then too. Uh, I'm not suggesting everything that any Rabbi ever says is always Misenai, but I'm saying if the Rabbi is getting up and saying it's Allah Moshe Misenai, so someone says, well, who said? You know, so what do you mean who said? So Sassan and Simcha, these two fellows, since they were named with Jewish names, Sassan and Simcha, their relationship to these psukim, Usha'avtim, Mayim, Besasun, as an example, has nothing to do with the Yisachamayim, or it's uh, the joy that should be uh, uh, found at the time of the drawing, Usha'avtim, Mayim, Besasun, with a sense of joy, shall you raise it up. All they could see in the psukim was a reflection of themselves. He was there. Yeah, and, and, and indeed. So, but it, I, I think, I, I, I mean, that, that partially answers the question, I think. Why is it in the Gemara altogether? And why is it in the Gemara over here? By the by, um, it's interesting that Rabbi Abahu seems to stoop to the level of the Min. He says to the heretic, it says, Bissasun, not Lissasun. What is he, right? And he actually said to him, as you think it means they will draw water for you, it's actually by your lights, by your logic, they're going to use, if you want to be a hyper-literalist, your body, your something about your physical self will be the receptacle for the water, meaning it'll be the ultimate denigration. So I think it's the Maharsha. I don't remember if it's the Maharsha. One of the Mefarshim says the point is that a min was defined as a person who did not believe that which was not concretely found in a text. I use the term advisedly. And therefore, what does he have to do with Chiramatim? So he didn't believe in Chiramatim. So they told him, yeah, right. You don't believe in Chiramatim? Right. You're not going to have to Chiramatim. Ergo, at the time of Chiramatim, you're going to be. The, your body will no longer come back to life. It will be used, so to speak, just to carry the water, you know. So uh, so just um, an interesting Gemara. I don't have much else to say. Does anyone else have color commentary they want to offer? Sassan and Simcha? I have nothing against anyone named Simcha, but they shouldn't dash in the Psukim that it's about themselves as an individual, right? And the point is that uh, the Psukim are not just, uh, what's the word, clay in the hands of the potter. You just do whatever you want with it. There are you know, uh, certain certain uh, high-minded ideals. It's not about a competition between two two people to show who's greater than the other. Yeah, huh? There's a rhyme and reason, right? So, okay, so that's well. There are people, right? There are people named Simcha in the world. I don't know. There are people named Sasson. I know someone named Sasson also, right? I don't know if Sasson simply get into it. If they would, just say Ah, uh, Sukkah forty eight B. Don't do that. So don't <laughs> let them get into the soup. You know, with each other. So that's the first part of the uh, of the Gemara. It's a Sephardi last name. Sasson. Yeah, first yeah. name also. It's a first name also. Oh, I really? Know, I don't want to say the name now. But yes, I know someone named, uh, named but with the first name Sasson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually related to the Chicago community. And I'll leave it there. Let me go on in the, uh, I don't name names in this year. Um, so let, let me go on in the, um, in the, in the Gemara. Now, now we turn, I don't want to say to a more serious topic. The, the Gemara quote, if Chazal quoted it, wasn't just like, let's fill, you know, fill a paper up with some writing. The point is, it's all on this page against the backdrop of the battle between the Chachamim and the Tzdukim. How do you how do you understand received traditions? How do you understand Psukim? What's the level of interpretation? Is it up to you know? Can it be reduced to just uh, uh, you know an egotistical uh, battle between two fellows who have the same names as concepts in the Torah? Right. Second to last line in the narrow lines. Allah bekevesh ufana li smolo. We said that for the Nisuch Hamayim, recall that the altar sits on, let's call it a north-south axis, a little farther to the south in the complex of the Beit HaMikdash. There's a ramp that you go up from the south moving northward. When you get to the top of it, usually you're supposed to turn to the right, not giving your back to the center of the Mizbeach. So you're going to your right means you're going around in a circle always to the right, and the traffic going down the, uh, the ramp on the other side, having gone across, around the entire um, rim of the Mizbeach. Not so for Nisuch for that 
It would be a left-hand turn to the corner where there are two bowls that we discussed, Rashi, Tosfot, Machloket, about whether it, Rashi maintaining its two objects that are movable, Tosfot, it's fixed to the ground. Rashi, the, the nose, the chotam of each one is the protruding so that they both intermingle as they come out onto the Mizbeach and then go into the, 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 the tubes of some sort, into the Mizbeach. Tosfot, no, there are slits and it goes directly in. Remember? So we talked about that last time. So here the Gemara describes all the cash from the small road, last of the narrow line, Tan Rabban, Kol Olm is Bech, Olin Derech Yamin, and we keep him to Yordan Derech Small, as we discussed. Chutz, Min Haola, Lishlosha, Devarim, Halalu. Three things. If a person goes up for these three things, Sha Olin Derech Small, you go up on the left side. The Chosen Allah Akev means you go back where you came from, you retrace your steps. Again, because you don't turn your back on the Mizbech, so you sort of move. Sideways and go back. back. Huh? Be back out or sideways? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, on top, on top. On the ramp, I think they could turn around and walk down, but on the ramp, on the Mizbeach itself. So Nisuchamayim and Nisuchayayim, we already discussed those two things. And Nisuchayayim, remember, is every day. So there's a Tommy Shell. Uh, Shoshach every single day. And the Nisachayayan, the Nisachamayim, as discussed, when there were many offerings being offered on the Mizbeach, the bird offerings, which did not have shechita, um, like the um, like the animals did, which was down below, not on the Mizbeach, but down below, past the north face of the Mizbeach, there was an area down below there, which was the place for shechita, essentially, a little north um uh, north uh east i would say a little bit but essentially to the north um when it came to birds they were killed through malika the shechita of the bird is malika so it, it's getting it right right there so um as discussed malika. yeah so do the malika there and there was a concern that if there are too many birds being offered at the same time which okay. generally took place again it's a north south axis just to imagine you go up the ramp from the south going to the north so then east west so the deshen was the place where the parts of the bird that were not going to be offered on the Mizbech, they have to take those other parts and put them in the deshen. The deshen was basically the, the refuse, the trash heap, call it that. It was about 20 amot to the south of the Mizbech on the ground. So, and, and, and it was because it was back behind the Mizbech, down the ramp and behind it, and also a little off to the east. So they used the east, the northeastern, excuse me, uh, yeah, the southeastern yeah. corner for the for the Malika. But if there are too many birds being offered at the same time, then they would start using the southwestern corner, even though, because it was at least closer than going around the Mizbeach, and they'd be moving farther away. And there was a concern that um that the uh, the smoke from the um from the uh the Mizbeach would damage the birds. If you look at Rashi, he gives us this. Um Sharav to it's um from the bottom, two, four, six, eight, nine lines up from the bottom in Rashi in the widest lines toward the end of the line. The beginning of that line is Bederach Sha'alubo. Keep reading from there. Ksharav Teba Mizbech. Makom Olad Ha'of Al Keren Dromit Mizrachiti. Mipnei Shikrov Lebet Hadash and Shasham Zorkin Morah Venotza. Kirichti Vishlich Ota Eitzel HaMizbech. Ubeit Hadashan Haya Eitzel Kevesh Be Mizracha Samuchla Be Shalosha Tfachim. Rachok Mina Mizbech Chaf Am. So it's three tfachim away to the east, but then 20 amas back to the south. It was, just, it was a distance away. So kiritznan, the Masecha Tamid Gabe, Torim et Hadashan, Rusha Olada of Rabba, the Mizrach, Sheyesham Kohan, Rabbi Molkin, Olada of Boyin, Vaosin, Otam, Ravi, Dromid, Otam, Sheyn, Yecholin, Lama, Ocha. There's just not enough room to stand. So they move away and go to stand on the other, uh, on the other, uh, on the other side. Okay. So that's that's as far as that uh, uh, element. Back to the Gemara, third line of the Gemara. El Shayu Mashchirin. These uh, El Shayu Mashchirin. Excuse me. There was a discussion about what this seifa was made of. This, these bowls were they made of some kind of silver? Were they made of clay? So one of the opinions that we had seen previously, which is actually still in Memphis Amud Aleph, toward the bottom, Rabbi Yehuda says it was made out of plaster or clay, but they became blackened because of the wine that was poured into them. 
So the Gemara says, well, that works for one of them, Bishlama the Yain, back in the Gemara now, third line, Memchet Amid Bet, third of the wide lines. Bishlama the Yain, Mashchir, right? Because it gets black, because you poured the wine on it, which is a red wine, so that's what's going to happen. Demaya Amai Mashchir, but you pour the water, buys up blackening, it wasn't changing its color. The Gemara says, Kevin to Amar Mar, Ira Shalmayim Latok Shalyayim, Shalyayim Latok Shalmayim, Yatza Shalmayim Atila Ashkure. Since we already also had a statement that if a mistake was made, and we had that in the Mishnah, Mem Chad Amudbet, right on the top of the page here. If you poured the water one into the wine one, the wine into the water one, still Yotze. So if that's the case, sometimes they made a mistake and that would make it uh, uh, turn a blackened color, meaning looking like a tarnished kind of a silver. Okay. There were two slits that looked like two nostrils or maybe two noses. Toast foot more like nostrils, Rashi more like noses. We saw we said that Rashi had like a spigot on the bottom of each of these yeah. sephalim, each of these bowls, and then it would go onto the surface of the Mizbeah. Let's say the Mishnah falls Rabbi Yehuda and not Rabbanan. Rabbi Yehuda Omer Bilog Hayat Menaseh Koshmona. Rabbi Yehuda made a point that it's all eight days that you do the Nisuch Hamayim, but also that it was only one log. One log, as opposed to Rabbanan, who thought it was three logan. So if it's one log that is going to be poured, so um, then uh, then we understand, since there's a different, sorry, there's, sorry, three, what did I just say? One log of water would be used, sorry, but everybody holds that the yayin was going to be three logan, because we have, um, it's a rivi'i tahin, right? We read this in the, uh, the, the, the right, the Nisukha yayin every day was rivi'i tahin. A hin is 12 logan. So a quarter of the hin is three logan. Three logan wine every day. And according to the Chachamim, three logan of water. According to Rabbi Yehuda, only one log of water. If there's a discrepancy between the quantity of wine and the quantity of water, three to one, then we understand why the slit for the in the hole in the bottom of the seifel for the wine should be a wider hole. We want both of the liquids to drain at, at, at the same pace and finish at the same time. So the Gemara says, looks like we possibly like Rabbi Yehuda. Because if we follow the Rabbanan, right? It doesn't uh, doesn't fit. The e Rabbanan, he hadade ninhu, right? Because they hold it's the same amount. Three wine, three water. So I need different sizes, right? We saw, look again, hold your finger here, go to the top, top of 48B. Right? One is thick and one is thin. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's the answer. That's the answer. I feel it to Chama Samich Maya Kalish. You could even follow according to the Rabbanon who hold it three Lugan wine, three Lugan water, but because the consistency is different, that's why you need a larger slit for the wine because it's thicker and it's going to flow slower. Right, so um, so hachinami mistabra. It also fits like this. The Rabbi Yehuda rachavikatsar itle. If it was Rabbi Yehuda, the Mishnah Paskin like Rabbi Yehuda, the lashon of the two slits being the different size, two holes being different sizes, would have been narrow and wide, ra- wide and now rather rachav vikatsar. That's not really what it said. The Tanya, because we have a bright that says Rabbi Yehuda Omer shnei kasvaot. The Aruch translates kasvaot as some kind of a cleat. To some kind of a kalim, kasvaot. So these uh, kalim, hayusham echad shalmayim veechad shalyayin, shalyayin piha rachav, shalmayim piha katsar. So we have, in other words, a brayta where Rabbi Yehud is quoted as saying that he did use wine and water, two different things. The one of wine is a wider, uh, wide, and the one for the water is narrow, right? Kadesh yu shneim kan bevan achad shmamina. Since he used that language. That is because he has a discrepancy of uh, of um, quantities. Three log in wine, one log of water. Not so for Rabbanan. Therefore, what the Gemara is concluding here is, we'll see Rashi saying this in a minute, for Chachamim, since it's the same amount of liquid, but there's different consistency, they use the, the I would say, the softer language of dak and me'uve, thin and thick. Dak means a, a thin something, and me'uva means it's thicker. Rachav katsar 
has an implication of something harsher. It's much bigger, much smaller, you know, in terms of the, just the, la- the language. So look at Rashi, the third to last line. Hachinami um, Mistabra. Yeah, Hachinami Mistabra, third to last line. The um, Matnitin Rabbanon he, that really the, the Mishnah does follow the Rabbanon, not Rabbi Yehuda, the Ilu, Rabbi Yehuda, Rachav Ekatsar Ilay, the Mishnah should have used the language, Rachav Ekatsar Klomak, Sham Inan Lay, the Beloshan Echad Rachav, the Echad Katsar, Ka'amar Lay, the Lo Beloshan Uva Vidak. Right? Rachav Mashma Yeter Al Katsar, Tfe Mi Yitura de Uva Al Medak. The sound of the wide versus narrow seems to be a larger discrepancy than Dak, Muva and Dak. Muva is like um, thick and thin. Yeah, that's what Rashi. Rashi concludes. Um, so that's that's as far as as that uh, that piece. You can see we're flying through the Gemara here. Uh, not so much uh, to deal with in terms of Rashi Tosfot. And we'll, we'll keep going for now. But for, for drinking wine, it was diluted. But for the Beamidesh, it was kept in its original form. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Mizigat hayayin to pour the wine really didn't mean to pour wine. It meant to balance the wine with water because they kept it in, in in concentrate. Essentially, it was better for the wine and the storage and all that. So yeah, you mix it. Okay, so now um, So ne- next piece, third to last line. Ma'aravo shalmayim. Right, the one the one to the west was for the water. The one to the east was for the wine. Yeah, we discussed already. Okay, tanravana. <clears throat> We saw that in the Mishnah. But here we get also, and this, this was not in the Mishnah, On that day, the corner of the Mizbeach, the horn of the Mizbeach, was damaged on account of these, these etrogim, which is strange, right? So it seems, and that Rashi fills in the blank. Nifgma Karen Mizbech, Ayde Avanim Shazarkubo. It wasn't just they threw etrogim; they also threw stones, but they were mixed in with the etrogim. The Mishnah mentioned only the etrogim, and uh, I think I quoted to you last time from the Shiur Hagrid, where Soloveitchik points out that they Davka, the Mishnah wants us to know that it was etrogim that they pelted him with, because they were essentially um, rebuking him even in throwing etrogim since the uh, Etrogim's appearance was itself only known through the Masora. Right? And of course, I think I did quote this. And Akdamit yeah. Peshem Shnai, the Rambam writes, and the, how well Etrog looks today, he died in 1204, but the Zara Muna with the same Etrogim that he had. How, does he, how do we know what the Etrog looks like, he says? Because we got it from our forefathers. We don't know. It's all it's an unbroken chain. It's a Masora, right? We had learned that Gemara also. That was why there was a concern if you don't have an etro, don't put something else to be a stand-in because they're going to learn the wrong thing and it's going to be at the misrach and the end people are going to learn the wrong halacha. Yeah, and then the future will think you can use this or that, you know. So so they use the trogim in order to underscore that that even that's part of the misrach. So how can you accept that Stukim accept an etro looks like that, but they don't accept Nisach HaMayim. One they accept, one they don't accept. It also involves an interpretive gesture. Anyway, mixed into it, apparently were also rocks and stones and that would make sense Um um, to then explain how it is that there was a, there was damage done to the corner of the mizbeach. Uh, they took uh, some kind of a they made did patchwork using salt, patched it on it somehow, and they sealed it. Not that that made it kosher for the service. So that the mizbeach would not look uh, would not look like it was damaged. Something was was missing. Rashi just says two words, mipne ha kavod. It should look, it should look a certain way. I don't really understand this Gemara, I'll tell you the truth. I don't really, so it looked nice. But you can't use it, it's possible for avoda. So you have to look nice. So mipne ha kavod, while they were repairing it, they have to repair it pretty quickly. High traffic time, Sukkot. What day of Sukkot was this? Unlikely that it was Yom Tov. This was the first day. This was the first day of Yom Tov. How are they putting salt? Like you can't, they're, they're mushing the salt with the water to put it to patch it on. Can't do that either. So it must have been cholamoid, huh? Made of stone. But here's the discussion. We're gonna you know, let's let's see it right now. That that's a, that's gonna be a little bit of discussion right now. Um, and that is shekol mizbeach to the top of mem tedem adaf on forty nine a now shekol mizbeach she'in lo lo kevesh 
ולא קרן, ולא יסוד, ולא ריבוע, פוסל לעבודה, רבי יוסי בר יהודה אומר, אף הסובב. So, enemy's bear that's missing the ramp, that's missing a corner. When you think of the mizbeach, the mizbeach is, a, and the next one is, a, a, it has to have a yesod, and ribua means it has to be square. So it's a square structure, standing over the ground with a flat top. But if you, you've seen these pictures already many times, there are four corners that are protruding by one ama. All four, cor- the four corners are like an extra piece attached. So uh, that's also required, according according to the Gemara. Square, not a rectangle? No, it's a square. Yeah. And yisod was the base, right? Right. And then the yisod is the base that went around, right? Two sides of it. And then ribua has to be square. Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yehuda says, even the sovev, the sovev was five amot up from the ground. There was, a, it it went in. We saw this already when we did the story about Arava, how it was leaning, had taken into account the sovev, and taken into account the, uh, the um, what's it called? The uh, new the, the yesod and the sovev, right? And so it was on an angle. It wasn't straight up leaning on it because it had to go in by one ama and then another ama. Remember? And Yuma also, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's discussed. That's that's mentioned uh, here. If you look at um, Rashi, the first Rashi here, Shekomi's Be'ach. In other words, the point of quoting this, by the way, was it's missing the Karen. You might have thought the Karen of the Mizbeach, it's not the Mizbeach, it's an adornment. It looks nice, but it's not crucial. No. So Chazal tell us here, no, 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 no. Mishnah Furash and Zvachim, absolutely, you need the, the Karen. And without it, it's not kosher. Lachi ein kosher la'avod, just calling his bech, she'ein lo karen v'kevesh v'yisod v'ribua, pas la'avoda. Hachi garsinan. Karen, evan, ama al ama, berum ama. A karen is an ama made of a stone, which is one ama by one ama, and by one ama, right? Three-dimensional. L'chol karen, on each of the four corners. V'yisod, the hainu ama knisa rishona, uh, uh, means that it's the first Ama going in, meaning it's one ama wide, essentially. All right. Um, uh, sorry, and ribua means it has to be square, perfect square. Im chaser echa mikol elu pasul. Vitama amarav huna b'shchitat kadshim komakim shnemer ha mizbeach laakev. The hachim ashma ha mizbeach. So ha mizbeach asui kain the hanach bekulukativ ha mizbeach. In other words. As the Gemara and Zvachim tells us, whenever it says Hamizbech, means it has to be part of the Mizbech. That expression Hamizbech Leikuva. Yeah. So uh, here are the examples: Arkan Mizbech Beetz Baacha B'Miluim Uva Keves. Yeah, sorry. Beetz Baacha B'Miluim. Again, Ayin Sham the Pasuk. Uh, pasuk uh, comes to Shmot Chavtet Lekach Mi Mapav and Atada Al Karnot Hamizbech. Karnot Hamizbech Beetz Baacha. So you have both of that. That language is um, is, is the language of Hamizbeach. The Kevesh Ktiv El Pnei Hamizbeach. Again, same idea. The Kevesh who pun of Shemizbeach Shu Pitchov Aliyato. The Kevesh is the face of the Mizbeach, and it's the entrance, and it's the the, the ramp because you're going up the ramp. So it's you're going up to it, right? The Yesod Ktiv El Yesod Hamizbeach. Ditto. The Ribuah Ktiv Ravua Yeh Hamizbeach. Same thing, and we take we take that um, that idea. Rabbi Yose by Yehuda Omer Af Sovev, even the Sovev, that is more of a discussion, more of a debate. Ma'akvo to Kasavar Karkov Hamizbeach Zeu Asovev. When the Torah uses the expression Karkov Hamizbeach, it refers specifically to the to the Sovev, according to him. Very memorable Hamizbeach. Rabbanan Svira Lehu Zeu Hakiyor. They think that that the Karkov Hamizbeach is really the Kiyor. Okay, that's the uh, that's the idea. There's a very long toast here that um, for tonight at least I'm skipping because I just want to make a little headway in the Gemara, a little bit shorter shear, and the toast would take us just too long to deal with now. But to say it very uh, concisely, they have a different concept of what the Karen is. They think it is something made out of smaller stones that's held together by plaster, and therefore. It would make more sense, therefore, that a smaller rock knocked off the plaster and chipped off one of the smaller rocks that made it. And therefore, its repair would be simpler because you need a smaller rock and the plaster. So 
the salt mixture, whatever that is, was just like um, a stopgap for, for a little while while they got the building materials together. Uh, uh, a holy, a holy piece of gum. A holy, a, 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 certainly, certainly, uh, certainly holy. By the way, um, if you, if you, um, if you, I mean, it, it's mentioned already all the way like to the end of the, of the, um, uh, of the whole toast foot here, right? I had all idea I was going to do toast foot and it quotes from the end of our parsha the end of Yitro, about things being hewn out of one stone, not Pat, pat, um, patching them together, but that was only for the Mizbeah, not true for the for the tops. So the second to last line of the Tosfot here, this big, big Tosfot, quotes in the Gemara and Zavachim and Nundalad, Shibana Tuba Vanim Chalukot, Gonna Chaluke Avonim in Anachal, and so Becholayam, Becholayam, Nivru Chalakot, Mishetim Ebreshit, there's a whole thing there. Okay, and he says, you know, wait a minute, what about Evan Shlema that you need? So, uh, you know, and we have the whole idea of the Shamir, that's the whole discussion in the Gemara in Zavachim, had this little worm and it was cutting things. So what are you telling me that it's little patchwork, but the question of whether the Karen was not the same as the rest of the Mizbeah. It would make, in other words, we're trying to understand, like, how big could the rocks have been? They're lobbing them from down below on this, this uh, stuki on the top. So they lopped off a piece of those pretty big stones. They have a catapult. So if there's smaller rocks and they're throwing them, and there's a large, you know, rock this big, but it landed on the corner and it knocked it off, and it was made of smaller stones. It makes more sense. Okay. We know where the earth gets in rocks. So oy, gewalt, oy, gewalt. Shalom, askir. Yeah, the havdel, rishai, rishai. Okay, all right. Everybody good so far? Okay, here we go. Uh, maybe we'll get to this toast foot next time. I say maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, there's, it's just some interesting things here about the different things in the Beit HaMikdash. Um, okay, so next, next piece about this. On the very subject, um, uh, line, uh, what are we? Line three. Um Amaraba Bar Barchana Amrabi Yochanan Shitin Mishme Bar Shit Nivru. Now, what are the Shitin doing here? When we discuss the pouring of the wine, the wine and the water both are going into these holes and they're going into the Mizbeach. So Machloket, where is it going? So the Shitin seem to be tubes. And these tubes, according to Rabbi Yochanan, are from the six days of creation. Shenamar, as it says in Shira Shirim, Chamuke Yerechaich, Kemo Chalaim, Maseyade Uman. Amen, excuse me. The, your, your, your rounded thighs are like a precious uh, gems. Uh, they were made by a craftsman. He interpreted. Chamuke Yerechaich, Elu Hashitin. It refers to the, the, uh, the, these are the tunnels that are hidden underneath the Mizbeach. Those are the shitin, kemo chalaim shemechulalim v'yordim aratahom, that they are hollow and they go all the way down to the abyss. Masayde amen, like the work of a craftsman. Zumasayde umanuto shel hakadosh baruch It was made, you know, the artistry of hakadosh baruch hu. Tana devei Rabbi Yisrael breshit al tukri breshit ella bara sheet. You read it as two separate words. In the beginning, what does God create? He makes these channels. A mystical idea, yeah. Rashi, Rashi, Shitin, Chalal Shtachem Mizbech Keneged Makom Hanesachim. It's the 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 space, the 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 the, the, the tunnel. Chamuke means sitre, lashon chamak avar, something hidden. Nistav nichsa mimeni v'chein ad matai tit chamkin refers to something tisteri mimeni. Shaat busha likarev elai al shema alt bi. Yeah. That's something that's hidden, concealed. It's a drasha on a pasuk, a very beautiful um, uh, idea. Uh, I don't mean to clearly it just reduced to its aesthetic properties. Maybe he had a received tradition about it. Maybe he was trying to understand its source. Um, but the point here is there's something that tethers uh, uh, our, uh, our world and pours the wine, pours the water. Where? Back to the beginning. Back to the beginning of creation, the sheishit may breishit, something like that, to a to a place that is that is far, far away, a journey to the center of the earth, if you will. Yeah, so they pour it in the in, in there. Okay, masi the munato shal akodesh baruch hu garsinan ba'aleim kara david lo garsinan lebet tosefta. We're going to see this actually elsewhere about the the digging of these of these uh, of these tunnels or opening them up by David Hamelach. So it's not in tosefta. Right, Nami, Logar Sinanle, Demandi Itle, 
Sikra'an, Leitle, Shemesheshit, uh, Mebreshit, Nivru, the one who claims that they were dug, clearly doesn't hold that they were from the six days of creation. It's a machloket, whether they're really from the six days of creation or not. It's also a machloket how far down they go. If you look back in the Gemara now, we'll have another idea, right? Could both of these ideas be reconciled? I'm sure they could be. Do they need to be? Not sure they need to be. One feeling, one idea, you have great Chachayim, Rabbi Yochan, Rabbi Shmal, from Sheshit Mei Breshit, they were already there, where they had to be re-accessed, remined, opened up, something like that. That's a discussion uh, elsewhere uh, in the Gemara about David HaMelech doing that. But um, the idea of, and there are a lot of beautiful, um, what's the word, um, just ma'amarim and and divrei uh, uh, Torah uh, about the idea of the pouring of the water and we're davening for uh, Gishmei Brach and we're pouring back, we're giving back the water. Nisach Hamayim comes up on the Mizbeach. There, ma'amari Chazal in this in this vein and uh, one time of the year and we're returning the water we took from the earth back to the earth. The whole thing and uh, becomes a, a prayerful act of Kodesh Baruch Hu, that we should have rain, etc. Nisach Hayayin also that we take what we made from the liquid that became the most fermented, highest level. Um, a liquid that humanity can produce, and we're returning it back to the very beginning. Uh, that this, the, the, the end is na'utz in the in the beginning. Wow. If these are mystical concepts, that's fine. You don't have to go into them. I'm just giving these little pathways. Wait, uh, Francie first, and then Eddie, go. Any talk about the pitcher that was in using? The Not action? so much. I mean, we saw before, you know, that it was here, and um, it seems that that uh, you know on Shabbos they had a gold one that they kept chavit shalzav. But uh, otherwise, it's interesting. I was not not I didn't I didn't see so much on it. Maybe the midrash doesn't describe it, but the gemara here you're looking at like I'm looking at it doesn't doesn't mention. That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, a practical level, if David was was opening them, then it had to be before the Bayamikesh because it couldn't. Have been then he was before. opening them up, right? Unless he was actually initially excavating them, and they weren't dug before. Rashi says you hold that, and you probably don't hold it where Mishishi may break sheet. But if you don't like any of this, there's another opinion as well. What did you know? Tani Rabbi Yossi Omer, Shitim Chulal and Vyodin out of home. So Rabbi Yossi says they're hollow. They go all the way onto the abyss. Shenamar, Shira La Na Liyadidi, Shirat Dodi, Likarmo, Kerem Hayel Liyadidi, Bekaren Ben Shemen, Vaya Az Kehu, Vaya Sal Kehu. Should have read it in the right uh, right intonation, the right uh, the right psukim. Uh, pa, 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 have to find it one second. Um, mm -hmm. oh, interesting, it's not not quoted, not quoted here in um, in depth. It's strange that it wouldn't be. It's Gimel, I did miss it. Yeah, Shirna Li Didi, Shirat Dodi, Lecharmo, Karamaya Li Didi, Bekaren Ben Shemen, Vaye Az Kehu, Vaye Salke, Vaye Sak Lehu, Vayita Ehu Sorek. Vayiven Migdal Betocho, Vigam Yakev um Yakev Hatsevbo, Vayikav Lasot Anavim, Vayas Beushim. So this is in the words of censure from Yeshaya Navi against the Jewish people. Um, he's going to sing for his beloved one, the song of his beloved one, to his his vineyard, meaning the Jewish people that belong to his beloved one, that um uh, essentially was prepared to be a vineyard and he built a tower within it and the tower is the Beit HaMikdash, right? And then there was there was a wine press in it uh, and there was a, um, uh, a an attempt to uh, set everything up just the right way and in the end it made sour grapes. It's the original sour grapes, not the one from from Lahavdol uh, Feavdol from um, you know uh, fables, but from the one from 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 Shai Hanavi Vayaz Beushim. So that's that's the end of the psukim here. So so comes the um, the the drasha of what what all these what all these uh, uh, mean, right? So it it explains, right? So Vayiteus Soreg Zebeda Mikdash Vayiven Mikdal Betocho Zemizbeach. The oh sorry, I made a mistake. The Soreg is the the is the 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 roots of the of the gaff and that's the Beit Mikdash the tower that's the Mizbeach the Yakev the wine press a or the place that, where the wine is, is it comes to be gathered that's the Sheetin that's the Sheetin in other words Hashem set the whole thing up and uh, the point of the censor is and you uh, you ruined it if you look at Rashi he gives us a little more of the background Liyadidi you see it's second to last line in the narrow lines of Rashi. I'm going to rail about this issue right now on behalf of my beloved one, meaning of Hashem. Shirat 
Dodi le Carmo. Al Carmo means regarding his vineyard. Karmel Yedidi, the Karen Ben Shemen, the Eretz Yisrael, Zavit Hashemen, we call Aratzot. Ben Shemen, which might have been someone's name, might have been a level of Pshat, right? Something about oil. No, it's the, the fatty corner of all the world is Eretz Yisrael. That's that's where the Karam is. Vayi Azkeu, Banalem Arim Bitsurot, Mukafot, Latam of Riach, Kitabat, Kitabat, Targamin, and Izka. Izka is the, trans, is, the, is the Aramaic translation of a ring. So a ring that's protective. And the point here is that there was uh, there are cities that are fortified, that have uh, doors with locks on them. Everything was set. Vayi Sakleu, taking out the the, the, uh, the rocks, right? Kiadam Fana Avani Mikarmol, Klomak, Pina ha'umot mipneihem. He took out not the rocks, but the other nations. Shliyesh v'at some peniachti otam, lest they come to cause the Jewish people to sin. Vayit vayita ehu sorek not to gefanim meshubachot v'lozmor el sharashin atzman. Not just the branches from the uh, vineyard, but the roots are already right there. They're ready for them. Zebeit amikdash shu shorshin v'ikaran shemachavavin lifnei amakom. That's the root and the mainstay of that which is. Uh, uh, beloved uh, uh, before the Almighty. It's like a stronghold uh, tower. A Yaakov is not just a wine press, but more precisely, it's where the wine is gathered as you press it. It's not we, we, we have the word we have the word Yaakov when we do Hoshana, Yaakov Meyalek. In, in the whole right, right. We're worried about right. Excellent. Oh, we're worried. Yeah. We're worried about about uh, pestilence hitting it. Yeah. Right. 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 So bait bait sheet to the malka lashon lashon but bait sicha the malka. Excuse me. Lashon sicha umaara. Right. I don't know what po, I didn't understand. Posian is something belaz something in old French. Don't know. So the point is, according to this uh, this this version, so it's uh, it doesn't give you the the history of it. But it sounds like a Kodesh Baruch who someone set it up. It doesn't say who. It doesn't say if Hashem literally did it, um, or if Hashem had a shliach, whether shliach was David Melech or whatnot. In the same way that it says Hashem cleared out the rocks, it means He cleared out the other nations. Yeshua Binun and uh, in the days of the Shoftim, still at the beginning, they're still trying to clear out the rocks and trying to clear out the other nations. It shouldn't make problems for the Jewish people, right? The Beit Mikdash was made by Hashem, but it was made by Shlomo Melech, who says it's for Hashem, etc. Right? So he's back also, and then the point is that there was. The shitin are part and parcel of that initial construction. The Kosh Baruch Hu said, "Tanya Amrav Elazar Bar Tzadok Bar Tzadok Lul Kat and Haya Ben Kevesh Lam Yisbeach Umarav Shal Kevesh Beachat Lasivim Shana Pirchei Kehuna Yordel Nisham Umalakti Nisham Yain Karish Shedomeli Gulei Dvela." There was Kosh Baruch Elazar Bar Tzadok. There was a small gap of some kind, a hatch practically that existed on the between the ramp and the Mizbeach. On the west side of the ramp, so I told you already, the ramp goes south to north. It's down on the south side, you walk up in a northerly direction to go up the ramp. So at the top of it, there was some kind of for half of the mizbeach, which is sixteen amot wide of the not the mizbeach, excuse me, of the ramp, which is sixteen amot wide. Half of it, eight amot of it on one side, the western side, from the one the side of the ramp closer to the Beit Hamikdash, was uh, some kind of a space there. And once every seventy years. The uh, the the uh, Kohanim who were the young Kohanim, I mean the kids, Yeladim Kohanim, Rashi says they gave them a job to clear out the wine that had caked inside that chamber, i.e., that it is not all the way down to the Tehomes, the abyss. You never see it again. But according to the laws of Ben Sadok, there was some kind of a compartment under the Mizbeach that was hollowed out, and that's where the wine would go. And over many decades, it would become congealed like igule, like pressed figs. So they were taking it out. It was these uh, these blocks. I don't know. It looked like jello. I don't know what it was. They pulled it out. Seventy years worth of nisuchim ayam. To remind you, it was every day. It's a lot. So if, I guess they figure out evaporation. It's not. So his uh, his account is that they would take this out. They would burn it. Bekedusha means not just not throw the garbage, but they would uh, put it in a burn it in a place of of kodesh per se. If you look at Rashi. We skipped a few, so uh, um, we'll take it back from wh- what we were up to. The lul is an aruba, shehi milamala lamata. An aruba means like a window, so it's some kind of a of a hatch, something like that. Ben kevesh I can't, I don't understand exactly how this looked because 
it's small enough that a kid could fit through, but then how were people falling into it when they're coming down the ramp? Mm -hmm. So it has to be that it was on the side. Maybe it was a slit on the, on the width, um, on the height of the ramp. Cause if it was side, side, maybe it was a gutter of some kind. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe that's some way that it closed. We'll see though. The reason why I'm troubled by this or puzzled by it, and I tried to look course some of the picture books, see what they do with it. They all seem to be, I just, probably didn't understand it properly. Yeah. Rashi tells us there was a requirement there should be a little space between the Kevesh and the Mizbeh that they shouldn't be considered a one big unit. Mm -hmm. It should be a tiny space as it is for Allah reasons. We'll read that right now um, in the next Rashi, which is a rather large one. Ben Kevesh la Mizbeh, ha Kevesh arko la It was 32 um, uh, long. Mishafa ve'ola tet amot right um it, it was on a uh, on an incline and it would go up to nine amot so it would be um it would meet the top of the mizbeach rosho the top of it was not actually connected to the mizbeach as such it was a small gap a bit of air between the two so just as the blood had to be sprinkled, the basar also in some regard had to be had also had to be thrown in some way. Now I don't know that it meant they were standing on the ramp flinging it. The point is that you had to bring it up to the mizbeach and not that it was still on some object that was attached to the mizbeach, but you had to pass over something. Maybe the zrika was that you were crossing over the the line. On the eight amot of the western eight amot of the sixteen uh, amot wide kevish. There was a, a, a marble floor. It was closed on four sides. The wine did not get absorbed there. All of the libations the whole year would go down there. This Tana, does not think that it would go until uh, all the way till it's a home. The late, late, Upalik Adrabanan. It's an argument against the other uh, I'm going to go two more minutes, and I have to leave. I'm just reading shot in the Gemara, so we'll see you soon. Yeah, I understand. I understand. No, 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 uh, no harm. Uh, um, so the back to the Gemara. The Gemara. Oh, sorry, Rashi. Perchikuna. You lot of Kitanim. Yankar Shinefash Vinikrash. Right. It Ipush uh, means that it got spoiled. Vinikrash and it congealed. The Sarfino to be Kedusha. But Makom Kodesh Kodesh Bazara. When we talk Hashitin, Motzin Oto. Shloit Malu Hashitin Min Nesachim. She called Korban at Zibur by Yachid to an Nesachim. Chutz Michadet VeAsham. The Sarfino Otem Shal Asurim Bahana the Kodesh Hu. Okay. So um, and they would make sure to burn it. It's Asur and Hana. But basically, all Korban except for the Asham and the Chatat would all have libations with them, and it, a lot would accumulate over time. It's obviously a massive. Area, but it has a marble floor, internal, this internal cavity, whatever it is, and they would pick it up. I don't know if it was literally, I mean, it says 70 years, but it seems to me they're pouring a quantity. It's a lot, it's a lot of liquid. I don't know, but that's that's what it's described. Oh, I, I'm sorry, back to the Gemara, second to last line. As it says in the Pasuk, we all know that Pasuk from Parsha to Tamid, right? Turn the page. As the pouring has to be done in holiness, so too the burning in holiness in a place of Kodesh. My mashma, I'm Ravina, Atya Kodesh Kodesh. It's it's a it's a Xera Shava. Kodesh Kodesh. The word appears in two places, and we have a Masora that this is actually a hyperlinked spot. It's a Xera Shava. You know, just again, not stop making them up. Connected. Tiv Hacha, Ba Kodesh Asech Nasech. Right, so again, Bakodesh and Kodesh. So that's the idea. And this is the leftover wine after they did the Mizbeach, the Nisuch Hayayin. They would have to take it out and in the area of the Kodesh, they'd have to burn it. Again, it's interesting. There's such a machloket. The other opinion holds you never saw the wine again, went down into the earth somewhere. Which was it? 
Don't know. We'll find out when they rebuild the Beit Hamikdash which one it's going to be. We're holding on Mem Tanim and Bet, and we'll stop here for tonight. All under the Mizbeach. Yeah, Shkach to you. Good to see you. We'll see you soon. Wow.